talking a lot recently about the idea of failing and its bearing and its you know its merit, its bear, bearing with regard to success and its merit, its worth, and so forth. I wanted to talk a little bit more about that today on the Daily Summation from Kurtz Religion and Politics in a piece I'm titling Failing Now or Later, right? Uh, again, this is the Daily Summation from Kurtz Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt, and today is Sunday, the 14th of November of 2021. Welcome to everyone who's here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. And again, the subject for today is going to be failing now or later. And that's a question, right? Do you want to do it now or later? Would be what I'd say. I've talked a fair amount recently about uh, failure and its relationship to success. One thing I haven't really gotten into is how important it is to be willing to fail in the present. This is one of those lessons one learns having children if nowhere else, and you can be sure it can and is learned elsewhere. I've discussed in past the idea of your children or your child who should be able to do so not learning to walk. For most folks, it's a pretty ridiculous idea. They should be able to learn to do it. There are those who can't, and we know that. There are those who have no legs. There are those uh, whose legs don't work right. There are those who would do themselves damage if they tried to do that. Nonetheless, that's kind of what I'm talking about there. If your child can learn to walk, the idea of giving up on them uh, doing so is almost always bad. And though I've found instances where it makes sense to wait on a given lesson or set thereof, my youngest child wore a diaper until he was seven, uh, one failure or another makes pretty good sense, most particularly when you're younger. I think I missed something there. Give me a second. Well, that's okay. We get the idea. The point is, most failures that you're going to have make more sense when you're younger than when you're older. That's what I'm trying to get across there. One of the realities of life is we don't learn to take failure in stride as a vehicle moving us towards success. Or if we don't, I should say. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time broken. We'll, you know, if you fail and it, and it hurts you and oh, it's terrible and all of this, you're going to spend a lot of time broken and you just have to keep that in, in consideration. And it's not, that's not a good thing. Add to this the idea that failing when young is rarely as, quote, catastrophic, end of quote, as it is when you're older, and you can probably see why I let my son do things others say he cannot or should not do. What makes this more significant is that he lags behind his peers in unusual ways. That means, to me at least, any and every advantage I can give him, I should. If he has issues learning to read or write, then being adept where physical things are concerned may well prove to be the very boost that helps him to not be so far behind. I acknowledge that sometimes failure has undesirable consequences. Breaking bones and getting hit by cars are not things we want our young to go through. I'm not saying you should shepherd uh, you shouldn't shepherd your children i'm sorry and protect them from such things where possible that considered i don't generally think it's helpful being a quote helicopter parent end of quote even with my autistic son who has done things that prove he could end up in a world of trouble if he's not careful and if i'm not careful I make it my business to step away such that he has, quote, room to fail, end of quote. The funny thing, the funny reality, funny thing, more often than not, uh, and and more than you might imagine, he wants to try to fail, to pick himself up, and to move on to better outcomes. It seems like an odd question when you first hear it. Do you want, or want others, to fail now, or to defer that until a later time, when it may not be as easy as it currently is. Sometimes the answer is fall down now. At others, it may well be defer the flop. I would argue most of the time, though, you should do it now and not put it off. Believe it or not, more often than not, you'll be glad you did. Okay, so my son, as I say, is... He's he's autistic, 
I've said this a bunch. I know that I've said it a bunch. But my younger children, or my older children, I'm sorry, the older kids, had all learned to read by, at least in a rudimentary way, but I think really pretty well, by the time they were his age. Now, the age that he is now. He is not having so easy a time with that. There are issues with him recognizing letters. There are issues with him putting letters together into words. He loves for me to read to him, but right now, reading is not a thing for him. So for him, I try. we try and we fail at the reading, and we try and we succeed at the reading, just like, like you would expect. But we're still quite a ways behind other people. So I've made it my business to do things like to allow him to do things that are physical in nature because, quite frankly, he's not necessarily super adept, but he, he pretty well excels doing those things, right? So I really try to make it so that he gets the opportunity to do these things that uh, that make it possible for him to have successes. And part of the reason for that is just to make it so that he feels like he has a win now and again without me cheating him by telling him you won when you didn't, something I was talking with some folks yesterday evening about. Look, you, you know, just, uh, handing everybody a participation trophy and saying, oh, you're a winner when you, uh, as, he, as this guy pointed out, you lost every game, right, uh, that you played of whatever or, or failed at everything that you tried to do. That's not a good thing. On the other hand, it is important to hand people the victory once in a while, not necessarily at the things that they want, mind you, but to show them how good it feels to, to succeed, right? So my attitude about things is this. I let my son do things that I have let my son do things, and this we're sort of cinching this up now to make it so that it's less the case. But I literally let him do things that people said, um, you can't do that. And you can, you know, you you can understand that they're worried about liability and all kinds of other things when they do that. I get it. I, I'm not trying to say otherwise. But with that said, with that considered, I still want for him to be able to take the time to do things that he's actually going to succeed at. And that shows him that he can succeed. And sometimes it's in the oddest things, like eating a, a, a bite of a meal without spitting it out because it bothers him. Right. I was the same way when I was a kid. My dad used to have me eat things and the things that he had me eat sometimes were horrible to me. Looking back, I can't imagine why that was true, because actually it turns out those things that I all but hated when I was dealing with them when I was younger, I now really pretty much like. And so my, I consider my dad to be strongly to have been strongly vindicated. Of course, he's passed by this point, but to have been strongly vindicated by making me do things that I didn't want to do. And fail at them. And this is the important thing and the thing that I'm trying to get across to you today. Yes, uh, that child is going to fail. And yes, they're going to feel bad about it. But if that child, when they're, uh, you know, uh, 30 years old, can't put on their own clothes, can't tie their own shoes if shoe, if shoe tying is still a thing by that point, right? If they can't walk well, if they can't run good, if, if you know and it's because you didn't want him to fail, what have you done to your child? If And the same thing, obviously, look, it doesn't just work for your children. Obviously, it works for you. Oh, I don't want to fail. I, 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 I want, I, I'd I love to be able to drive, but I'm afraid I'll hurt somebody. Yeah, we all are. I literally had somebody run into me the other day while they were driving because, frankly, they failed. Now, where they failed worse is to run off after they've done it instead of standing up and, and taking responsibility for what they've done but my point is this none of us i don't i don't think anyway i think very few of us if any really want to harm somebody so yeah we're not we're not aiming to fail but you have to start taking those risks and failing if you're going ultimately to succeed and the sooner you do lots of times the better off you are here's one of the things that'll happen is you'll build up a whole bunch of things that you should have failed at and you didn't and you will end up being that person who has a million failures. And it makes you feel horrible when you go through it. Besides that you end up having to do a whole bunch of things a bunch of times before you get where you need to be. All right, I need to go ahead and wrap up now. Uh, again, look, if you if you don't fail now, you're going to probably fail later. So get used to the idea that failing now is often a better idea. 
Okay, so this is the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt, and today is Sunday, the 14th of November, 2021. Uh, that means tomorrow will be that beginning of the work week, today being the beginning of the Christian week. Tomorrow will be Monday, the 15th of November, 2021. Uh, thank you for everyone who's been here on Rumble, on the podcast, and on YouTube. Thanks for coming along today. Remember, Rumble is my preferred platform. You can give me a plus or a boxing glove on rumble as a positive feedback you can give me a minus as a negative feedback if you want to do that um, you can give me a thumbs up or a like on youtube as a positive you can give me a thumbs down or dislike it if you don't like what i'm saying or feel that there's some issue with my content uh, if i put the stuff out there and i have and there's an ability ability to com comment and you choose to do so uh, I will do everything that I can to read what you have to say, do my best to understand it, and uh, if I feel it appropriate, comment, re reply to your comment wherever you happen to put it. Hope you're having a good day today. Hope everything is going well for you, and hope to see you again on Monday's edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. The speaker on this edition of the Daily Summation is Kurt Schubert. This video is recorded on Sunday, the 14th of November of 2021. The Daily Summation is created for Kurt's Religion and Politics. Thanks for watching this edition of the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I hope you found it entertaining or instructional or maybe both. Uh, if you want to see more from me, you can go to blogs.kpshubert.com. That's blogs.kpshubert.com. I am on Twitter, Parlor, and Minds.com. My handle on each of those is at kpshubert. That's at kpshubert. I have a Rumble and a YouTube channel. They are the Kurtz Re Religion and Politics channels on Rumble and YouTube. I have a Facebook page. The Facebook page is Kurtz Religion and Politics as well, I, have, I am on Patreon. If you want to support me, that's one of the better places you can do that. And you will find me at Kurt's Religion and Politics on Patreon. I have a podcast. The podcast is podcasts with, a, with an S dot kpshubert dot com. That's podcasts dot kpshubert dot com. I think you should be able to find me with relative ease on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify as well. The best way I find to do that is to look for Kurt's Religion and Politics. You can try to use the Daily Summation. I find that it doesn't work as well as a general rule, but you can always try that. I'm glad to have you aboard today, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.